Hi everybody, Steven here. This is something new that I'm putting on my YouTube channel. Uh, it'll come out probably uh, twice every month. And this is a group that I belong to that I started back a couple of years ago with a bunch of ladies at my local scrapbooking store where we get together and we do art journaling. And since we can't meet anymore, we have decided to continue our meetings twice a month using Zoom. Uh, with their permission, I have uh, decided that I will post our Zoom meetings because we talk about a lot of new products and how we're doing new and different things in the crafting world. It's not just art journaling, although most of it has to do with that, but it's a little bit more in the mixed media style. So I thought it would be something that you would be interested in because we do share various ideas every week. Now, I don't do any editing of this video, so you'll see it as it appeared. So sometimes the sound quality isn't as good as it could be, and sometimes the visual presentation is, isn't as good as it could be. But if you're interested, you may gleam some really valuable information that's gonna help you on your mixed media art journaling journey. So enjoy. All right, I am now recording. <laughs> All right, we got that sorted out. Okay, so who's next? Joanna? Sure. You got things to tell us? Show uh, us? So this is my August COVID-19 card. Um, <laughs> excuse me. So I've been seeing this on YouTube. People are doing, they call them specimen cards. Now mostly they will put like some dried flowers in here. Yeah. So, so it's just a little piece of packaging here, um, like the thin packaging, like cellophane. So That's I made pretty. a little, they're specimen cards. <laughs> so I put the, the COVID microbes in it. Hope you sealed them in there and they can't come out anymore. That's exactly <laughs> right. They're not going nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I thought that was kind of cute. Whose stamp set is the are the little COVID guys from? Oh, it's it's a piece of uh, scrapbooking paper, and I'm just punching out all oh. the. Mm. Yeah. And whose whose brand is that? Uh, photo play. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. Photo play. COVID nineteen. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> where did you where did you buy it? Um I think I got it at the workshop in Stoke. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. Yeah. Either that or Carol's, but I think it might have been the workshop. Yeah. And I have some of those packages Gina was talking about. So from Dollarama. So this one is all sorts of feathers. Oh, they're gorgeous. Okay, I gotta go to Dollarama. Yeah, are and they then, are they there right now? Uh, I believe so. Yeah, and this one is bugs and butterflies and moths, and then there are just the the butterfly ones, and I also found this one. It's uh, tropical, so like. Uh, flowers and a mm. flamingo and toucan, but they're really gorgeous. I have not seen those. Yeah, so in the craft department, mm -hmm. but I really love the feathers one. Well, because it's Forever in Time brand, it me you might be able to find it at other dollar stores as well. Because I think um, Dollar Tree carries it. Dollar Tree, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Um, I've just seen them at Dollarama, though. Okay. I just know they yeah. carry that brand as well. Okay. Yeah. And that's all. Thank you. And I think I've seen those ones, too, that, that name brand, at Michael's. And they charge a whole lot more for the same thing. Exactly yeah. the same thing. Yeah. So it's a good deal. Okay. Thanks, Joanne. And let's okay. go to... Who's next? Let's go to Kristen. Hi. All right. So yesterday I went to Dana's house and well, I invited myself and she <laughs> accepted. 
And uh, I made my first Slimline card. Uh, so this is it. I oh, love it. Yes. That's with my new My Favorite Things stamp, the selfie stamps. Oh, Blair, sorry. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yep. That's cool. Um, so I have three crafty friends that are turning 50 this year. So inside, it uh, says a bunch of... <laughs> Gravity, <laughs> thou art artless bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, not so, and then I uh, used um, a layering die from Alt New that I got from Allie uh, and made this card. Oh, nice. That's so really then amazing. I saw a technique that they emboss the background stamp. So that's actually gold embossing powder. Oh. Background stamp. Oh, and this is for our friend Michelle. And I've done 50 stars inside. Hmm. Turning 50. Uh, Jane is also on that list, but I couldn't make the card in front of her. So. <laughs> and I guess you're not going to show it off either. <laughs> Um, also, not yet. also um, so a couple years ago, Dana and I and Michelle and a couple, I don't know who else was there, I got some uh, journal cards, uh, Christmas journal cards, and we just randomly made 10 Christmas cards out of them. So Dana suggested this year we pick a line and let's do that again. So we picked vintage, Simple Vintage North Pole by Simple Stories. Mm -hmm. Mm. And we got, oh, nice. we got the snap cards because they have all the like different things in three by four. We bought the six by eight paper pad and we bought uh, the, they call it bits and pieces because I bet no one can say ephemera. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and, I so can't. We're, we're do, um, a very limited, like let's have two embossing folders you know, a couple dies, that's it, a couple stamp sets, and not, and say, let's just make cards. So we're going to limit our supplies so it's not overwhelming. And uh, yeah, we're going to be doing that, I don't know, whenever we figure out we're going to do that, before Christmas, obviously. <laughs> but we just got our stuff in, so it's, uh, it's super cute. It, yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. Are you going to make your Christmas cards this year for the nursing homes? I will see. I'm not sure. I will see. I have uh, committed to a couple other things. So well, I, if yeah. I just start one day and I start making like hundreds of cards, then so be it. If not, I am not, I'm not sure if they'll be doing it this year because of COVID. Because it takes the volunteers to actually have to receive all this stuff. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> right. They do it. Yeah. Because who yeah. knows what's traveling in those yeah. boxes. Yeah, true. So anything else you have to show us? No, I think that's it. Um, oh. Those cards took me like freaking all day. So. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I used my koi water brushes for the first oh. time. How do you like them? Um, they're okay. They're, you know, they're not bad. I use watercolor paper. Yeah. I think that is key. I saw that, you know, sometimes they don't use watercolor paper. I, I actually, I, I lied. I did try them before and I didn't have success with that, but they mm. work really nicely. They do blend out. Um, embossing on watercolor paper is very challenging. Why is that? Is it because it's the, it textured. absorbs everything? It absorbs and it's also textured. So if you don't have enough Versa on there to get enough uh, embossing powder, the embossing powder will absorb in and will not be raised. Yeah, okay. Does your watercolor paper not have a smooth side and a textured side? Like I don't know. I'm using the blue Canson. Well, I think most of the ones, some of the ones, I don't know if it's Canson, but take a look at your watercolor paper. Often they have one textured side and one more smooth side. Dana, look at that. Yeah, I know you're close to it. What was that? Dana, you're closer to yours, so find it. Okay. I'm going to go look. All right. Good job. Sorry, Pat, what did you say? Hot pressed versus cold pressed. I think mm. hot pressed is smoother. So I, yes. I've um, just been learning about paper. Because <laughs> I do a lot of watercoloring. Yeah. 
the Canson XL, the blue one, mm -hmm. is a cold press. And one side, I would say, is probably smoother, yes. All right, then. Maybe I didn't pay attention enough, then. But I would say it's probably the back is smoother, so. Okay. Yeah, and I think that's one thing I discovered a long time, a while ago, so that, um, because, <laughs> also even just stamping, you know, anything I'm stamping, I can get a better impression on the flatter side. Yes. But does the flatter side have the same characteristics? Like, are you able to blend the watercolors the same way? Yes. Water okay, cool. Uh, yes, according to my ability to paint. <laughs> okay. Mine's not very good, so I would probably not notice the difference. That's all okay. I got. Okay, so you're done. Okay, so let's move. let's move right to Caroline then. Caroline. Okay, Caroline, I'm sorry. just, well, the answering machine is right behind me, which is why I muted myself for a second, but look, it's Mr. Nobody. Okay, just one oh, second. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay, I'm back. You're on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm, this is a copy of a card I made for my sister for her birthday. That's nice. <laughs> so what is it? Is it die, die cuts and... Well, because I knew you'd ask. <laughs> yes, I want to know. So what are those? Those are by who? This is Spellbinders. Oh, okay. And so oh. I, I didn't use the frame die. I just used the inset die plus flowers and the leaves. I don't know. I'm trying to get far enough away you can see everything there. That's better. Okay. So, yeah, it's a spellbinder set. And then I just used yellow jewels for the centers. And some of you may recognize the paper comes from, a lot of you bought that paper pack from Costco years ago. <laughs> oh, yeah, the one that had all the ugly paper in it? <laughs> well, the thing is, you know, in small bits, yeah. you can make ugly paper look good. <laughs> true, true. Yeah. So, so <laughs> that's what I did. Um, plus, if you'll allow me to share my screen for a second, I'm going to try and find sure, something. Okay, sure. No, I got to go back to somewhere else to find it for a second. Um, I, I, um, oh yeah, of course it won't go fast right now. Uh, <laughs> there it is. <laughs> uh, yes, here we are. So, um, and I'm just sorry, I'm just trying to come up with something here. Uh, uh, one, two, three, four. Okay, sorry, um, back to Zoom and then I close this and technology is great. Okay, so I have um, a place where I make some cards for um, and this is, and it's, uh, it's always an interesting challenge because I can't use anything plastic, so I can't use any embossing, you know, like any, I can't heat emboss, I can't, mm. so it was a challenge to try and do things. Simple is harder to do, I find. <laughs> True. So, um, these are from a stamp that, that I got in one of the magazines, um, and then I have this, do you remember that at, at Dollarama they, has, they had layering stamp sets that include, so there was these owls and I, that's the Tim Holtz um, log section. And then I have a die cut from Ali that has a little squirrel. So. Oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then uh, I made, um, so these cards with a birthday cake stamp and I just used those are, um, multiple part, you know, those pads that are like, these are three different colors. Mm -hmm. This one is actually, it's an old, I think, color box one maybe that had a whole bunch of squares of pastel images. So I was able to, you know, kind of tap it several times and I, I had to use my, you know, the stampers helper secret or whatever it is, the pad that's squishy in order mm -hmm. to get a decent um, thing. And then uh, this is a Stampendous stamp set where I put the trees and this, I was just trying to use the wooden embellishments and, and uh, just get something simple. The stamps are from close to my heart. 
Uh, and then these, the fox is also from uh, another magazine that I got. Cool. So that's, that's my attempt at watercoloring. I was using, I have these, uh, you may have, no, I, I think I was using it for my cat, my succulents, you know, the ink tents blocks mm. instead of the ink tents pencils, the ink tents blocks. Although I had to do, use regular Reeves watercolor for the sky part because I, I'm not very good at watercoloring. These are on, actually these may be on, um, oh, what's that stuff called? The, It's a kind of 110 pound cardstock whose name escapes me at the moment. But I was having trouble getting it spread so it wouldn't look so splotchy, so I had to kind of go over it. <laughs> so that was, um, that's basically what I've been doing, I think. Cool. So uh, anything else? That's about it? That's about it. I have a question for some, whether there's something that we might want to do at some point as a group. Okay, can um, we leave that? Can we leave that until we've gone through the show and share, and then we'll come to business? Yes. <laughs> okay, That's great. Fine. Thanks, uh, Caroline. And let's go to uh, Dana. Where's Dana? There she is. I'll spotlight Dana. Dana's in the spotlight. There she is. <laughs> I've been working on my ATCs, trying to get caught up. So I'm actually finally caught up after, thanks to my day with Kristen yesterday. So I've got. I, I'm going back way to April. So here's my April one. This was, I don't even remember what it was. April Fools. April <laughs> Fools. Says that on the back. All else fails, read it. So April <laughs> Fools. And this one is my May, which was royalty. Mm. Nice. Cool. And this How about one. about magic day? <laughs> I, had, I had the hardest time with this topic. I just couldn't come up with anything for Bridezilla. So <laughs> I like, I don't know what to do. So here's my Bridezilla. <laughs> it says, here comes the bride. Everyone run and hide. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. I like that. <laughs> and my uh, O Canada for July. Oh, that's pretty. Mm -hmm. It looks like Northern Lights. I don't know. You can't quite see all the oh. embossing in the background, but it, you cool. can see it better in real life. Yeah. And then my last one, I'm up to August, is the COVID. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> that's, 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 cool. that's cool. Yeah, so that's yeah. what I've been working on. Okay. Very good. I'm staying focused, so those little projects have actually been quite helpful. Great. Okay, so thank you, Dana. And now let's go to Pat in the spotlight. So Pat, what you been up to? Um, not too much. Um, there's a lady in Ottawa who I've gone to take some card classes from because she watercolors and I, I just love watercolor mm -hmm. cards. I don't know why. So um, she's actually developed an online class. It's not real time. It's just recorded mm -hmm. videos. So I signed up for it. It's on... Um, just picking colors, because I always thought she had nice choices in colors. And she, it, it's good. I signed up and I did the first two classes. And that's why I knew about the paper, because mm. all the time, like I'm not a, a trained artist at all. I just like watercolor. So I just buy watercolor paper and I just buy cheap stuff. And so I found out I've been picking the wrong paper to get good results. So she oh. said, you have to look out for 100% cotton um content so for example this canton stuff that i buy uh first of all it's cold pressed so it's rougher so if you want to stamp in watercolor uh, you get a better uh result with hot press but this when i looked it up it doesn't say on the packaging but i looked it up online and it's not a hundred percent content so you don't get the flow and maybe the mix of colors you want so for those of you who are interested in watercoloring look for a hundred percent uh cotton content and look for hot press so i did buy some hot press pre-cut watercolor um cards and when i compare it now it's not like i won't say it's noticeably smoother but it's definitely smoother to the touch so i'm gonna try that like with my embossing because sometimes i like to emboss some of my line stamps in gold and then watercolor like the poppies they tend to do flowers so that's the biggest thing i've picked up from her so far 
The first lesson was um, just using the three primary colors and she uses the Distress ink pads and the Distress Oxide and then she will use some watercolor pen sets, but she's a card maker. So that's why I like her classes. So maybe next time I'll have some results to show you. Great. Okay. That sounds good. That sounds like it's well worth taking the classes. The class, uh, yeah. did you have to pay for it? Yeah, it's 30 bucks. I think there's uh, nine lessons. Plus she provides some extra tutorials and um, the written content in PDF. So Oh, I, okay. I feel it's worth it. Yeah, I actually. pay 30 bucks for one of our classes in person, you know? Yeah, so, that doesn't sound unreasonable. Yeah. yeah. Can you send really the link? Like Pardon? Can you send us the link on how to get to it? Yeah, yeah. And she has like a whole blog if you look her up, Heather Telford. She, um, she, does, she used to design for a penny black stamps. Uh, and now she, like, she's from Australia, but lives in Ottawa, and she also likes darkroom door stamps. But she, I, I, it's just a style. If you like her style, then you'll like her blog. Yeah. Okay, sounds I'll good. I'll send the link. Okay. Yeah. Have I covered everybody except me so far? I think I've got everybody. Okay, I'm going to put the spotlight on me. And so, you know, last week I was showing you that paper mache house. Well, I've got a six part series on how I do what I'm just about to show you now, but I got so enthralled with it that I usually I do these for my vlog and I am only one week ahead of my vlog when I do them. This one I did in two days and so I've got my head in my vlogs with it, but I am really happy with this. This is my book house. And uh, so you see here you got I also call it my COVID house because I've got little Tim Holtz yeah. paper people looking out the windows. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Back inside. In the back. <clears throat> of course, this is on a box that had something in it. I don't remember what came in this box, but I like the box. It's like a little drawer. So you open up the little drawer underneath. Let me take the drawer out. And inside the drawer is a series of little journals hmm. all wrapped up. There are four of these little booklets. They're each the same, uh, except I've gave them headings. So I call these ones general notes. And then I have ones that says memories, travel, and um, ideas and thoughts. And they're little signatures. And inside, they're just lined paper. I made the lined paper. And I'm trying to get the glare off here so you can see these a little better. And um, I sewed them together on my sewing machine. And I also put a picture, I took a picture of the little house and put it on the cover of each booklet. But inside I did it as a watermark. Yeah. Mm. The pages. So they well. sit in a little drawer and I have a, just to keep them neatly together, I put a little gold bow, bow on them. So they just drop in the drawer. And then, let me just stick this drawer back in the house. And then the big surprise is the roof comes off. And in the wow. side, the roof is a mini scrapbook, or it could be a art journal. And wow. what I did was I put together a series of blank signatures, and I have them. It's not showing up on camera very well, but some of this is sort of an off-white, a cream, and then there's white, yeah, and alternated it. And I think I've got one, two, three, four, five, six signatures in this. And I put them using gold elastic uh, strapping, and I just gathered here in the middle to create this pattern. And cool. the thing is you can take the signatures out when they get full right. and you can put other ones in, or if you're using it as a, an art journal and you don't want to muck up your other pages as you're using wet medium, you can just pull out a set of these and work on that when it's dry, put it back in. But it all fits right inside the little house top, right down in here and under the lid. And I had a scream making this in my little <laughs> weather vane. I made the little weather vane myself. I found a uh, die. Uh, actually, it's a, a cricket die, and I cut out the little rooster. I actually cut it out of two pieces of cardstock and stuck it together so it's a little stiffer. And then I found a top of a pen cap, and I um, colored it in. It was a red or something. I did it with a Sharpie marker and glued that with Gorilla Glue on the top. And then I had some little stir sticks that I cut in half, put them up here, and put these little tiny letters, so north, south, east, west, on that. And he sits on the little roof. 
The house is covered in textbook paper and dictionary paper. And then I went over it with spray distress inks and sort of sprayed it on and then blotted it up to give it this look. And then I used uh, another die from Cricut to create the window coverings on here. And I put vellum on the inside of the windows and inside the door. I found this other die cut of this old screen door, stuck the Tim Holtz thingies looking out through them, made the little, I put gingerbread, what do they call that? Gingerbreading or whatever. They yeah, call yeah. Yep. On that, I put those on the, I'm trying to get this in the right picture here, uh, on the gables of the house. I just kept going. This was the thing. Got this freeze from Michael's and kind of a thing. And I had a ball making this. And so I'm going to make another, I'm going to see what other paper mache things I can get at Michael's and see what other things I can do with them too. But with the idea that you can keep something inside them, like little journals and things like that. So that's, a, I'm really happy with that. Can you tell? Yeah. <laughs> it's very much showing. Yeah. So, yeah. It was different from sewing. Yeah. Well, I was still doing lots of that. But <laughs> <laughs> anyways. So, okay. So let's, that's takes us to, um, let's say new business. Um, I will send you uh, the link in um, uh, for the next craft and chat that I'm hosting. And that's on September the 2nd. So that's, not next week, but the week after, isn't it? Or is it next week? Yeah. Let's say no, it's, yeah, it's the week. week. No, it's the week after. Um, I got a lot of feedback from the last one that I did. Um, people really seem to get into it. We didn't have that many people, but um, they seem to be, people seem to like it. So I will send you the link for that. Um, and so, uh, Caroline, you wanted to bring up something. Yes, so um, the thing I was wondering was uh, a lot of people have, uh, I think you're going to have to spotlight me, Stephen. Oh, yep, sec. Uh, where are you? There you are. Yes. Okay, there so, you are. Um, so a lot of you people, everybody's probably, or most people probably bought, you know, from um, Dollarama, you can buy the little wood veneers in these nine, oh, I'm just trying to get the glare off it. There. These nine part boxes, wooden yeah. boxes. Well, I have like five of this style and, and, and one that's a pink similar thing. I'm wondering if at some point when we either, when we get together or, or um, maybe as a project at some point, whether we want to do this as, you know, decorating, you know, altering these as mm. one of our, one of our challenges or group, you know, projects we all kind of do so that's all i was just wondering because i'm sure i'm not the only one who's bought these uh the, you know the wood veneer little wood veneer things from yeah dollarama yeah so, i've got a couple of them no one ever could have bought those no i just tossed yeah. some out because i didn't know what to do with them i i've got some too that i saved as well and i was trying to think of what i could do with them on a similar line to what you're suggesting so yeah, we could do that maybe if we if everybody has those or not. You can get them too if you go to Dollarama. I've seen them there sometimes with all the little thingies in them. Um, that's where I got mine from. Yeah, that's yeah, where mine are from. One. So that might be something we can try either. I don't know. Do we want to set it up as like a, a challenge thing or do we want to set it up as a um, with a deadline when to make it or just do it on our own and when we get something like that done that when the mood has hit us we show it how, how what's everybody thinking I, don't, I was i was kind of thinking like um this might be something you could do like with christmas stuff for instance or flower hmm. series or something like that you know i don't know if it helps it helps people if we stick for a theme or, or how about a how about a mini advent ca calendar? It has 12 sections. If you had, so instead of the 24, they usually do in an advent calendar, you could do a mini one, or if you had two of them, you could do something. Of course, advent Ooh, calendars uh, usually uh, stick something in them, don't you? Mm. Um, I mean, it, it, could it, be, it, it could be a rogues gallery of your family. Yeah. <laughs> or it could be the 12 days of Christmas, only your version of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, the ones you know, I have only have nine in them, but. Oh, so they only have, they only have nine? Oh, I thought they had 12. Okay, well. <laughs> you know, those, those little mini boxes remind me of Tim Holtz 
uh, miniature shadow boxes. So you could almost do little tiny shadow box, you know, even like yeah. Halloween, Halloween with yeah. eyeballs and yeah. bones or something. Yeah. That's Just an idea. Shadow box. So, I mean, the you other thing um, could be, um, if not everybody has them, we could probably, you know, sometime when I go to Carol's shop, I could drop them off for people to pick up. Um, you know, that can, she probably won't really mind if we're, if we, um, but anyway, that's cause I, you know, I can't see myself necessarily doing five or six of them, <laughs> who knows, but like I, I just checked my stash and I have three that are sitting there. Uh -huh. So, I mean, if we wanted to, I could drop a couple of these off, uh, at Carol's as oh, well. So I have five plus one, one a slightly different one. So yeah, yeah, they don't have to be the same size or anything. But yeah. as I said, I know that at Dollarama, when I was in there just a week or so ago, I did see yeah. that they had uh, these with um, some kind of little wooden thingies in them. Mm. The same thing yeah. for you know whatever they were costing. Yes. Nothing's a dollar at Dollarama anymore, but. You know. Sometimes they have like a, an alphabet in them or something like that, all yeah. made out of little wood. Yeah. Well, I've had, you I've know, had flowers or there was a fall themed one. So it had like leaves and acorns and a squirrel and a, something else. So, yeah. They certainly are small. But <laughs> so, yeah. But actually, I think that's, it's kind of, I think that's kind of a fun idea because mm -hmm. I've, I've been hanging on to them because I thought, well, they've got to be good for something at some point, but uh, yeah, so, okay, so. Oh, if we, and you oh, know what? Uh, yeah, what? Uh, Stephen. <laughs> yeah. Uh, when you did your book house, it reminded yep. me, I, I looked on Pinterest because somewhere I had seen what's called a book nook. It's a, a book nook, and if you look it up, it's like a little box that slides into your book case with a miniature street or little houses oh. and it and if you look them up they're fascinating so if you have a bookshelf covered in books then you can just slide these little boxes in and they're little vignettes with this with scenery like um i think i've i found what you're, you're talking about uh yeah, here sometimes I'm gonna... they look like a room like a room in a house or sometimes they look like a little street and I thought wow I thought of that when I saw your book yes okay. do you see it yes there it is there that's kind uh -huh. of cool too wow. that's interesting oh, it would be so look on Pinterest there's so many ideas and I thought there's an idea for all those little miniature things that like oh, Tim wow. sells That's kind of cool. Yeah, they are cool. Oh, it looks Ooh, really that, sharp at a bookshelf. Yeah, that could be a lot of fun. There you go, Even, Stephen. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I'm looking at this one right now. I've got the screen, but you see, it's, it's almost like it's hinged, right? Oh, yeah. So you open it up. But I'm thinking, boy, I could use you could use your dies. You don't have to do it to make it look like a house. You could do sort of like that idea with the tunnel cards. Um. Mm. You know, you yeah. could use your dies in different interesting ways. And you could use these little box things. You could do it with them, too. Yeah. Oh. And you could paint oh. the edges to make them look like they were a book. Yeah. That's really kind of like cool. Like the outside. Oh, I like that idea. Let's see. Stop sharing. <laughs> so if we do it with the little box things, then everybody needs two. Yeah, if you do it that way. But I mean, if if that might be um, to um, that Second might be, stage. <laughs> no, I was thinking that might be like, are we limiting everybody's creativity by actually putting parameters on it? Why why not just say, okay, here's the idea. We just yeah. showed this idea and see what yeah. you can come up with. And yeah. I would say, I don't know. I don't know if we need to really put it uh, onto a um, like a schedule for it. We've all seen the idea now. When the mood grabs us, we're looking for something to do. Either that or we say we've got a couple of months 
we can work on it and we have a date where we'll share what we've created. I don't want anybody to feel stressed out, you know, that, <laughs> that you have to do something like this. Well, you guys always stress me out. I have to go to Dollarama as soon as I get off the Zoom call. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so many ideas, so little time. Okay, You're well, let's put it this because way. I didn't let you go yesterday. <laughs> yeah, Kristen wouldn't let me go yesterday. Oh, oh. I just want to go on record. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I have a suggestion then. Okay. Why don't we, we'll use the, we'll call it altered, we want to call it altered wooden boxes or something. Altered mm -hmm. Wooden Boxes Challenge. We'll set our due date for our first session in, say, December. That okay. gives everybody tons of time for ideas. And theme is left open, wide open. It's whatever you want to do with it. And which I think will make it really interesting when we come all together and, and show that and, and do it that way. What do you think? Thoughts? Brilliant. Um, I think that's, I'm, I'm better with a deadline plus some time. So that's, that sounds really good to me. Okay. The other so thing, I, I would need to know just cause I don't go to Carol's that often, but I think that's the best place. I just need to know at some point if someone needs me to drop some off or now that, or whether, <laughs> because everyone's going to head out to Dollarama and yeah, end up with their phone anyway. Up. Yeah. Okay. Well, if anybody wants one from me or one from, uh, Caroline, then just drop us an email thing. Um, but yeah, I think we're all going to be hitting the dollar store. So I'm just looking for date here. So our meeting, if it, we do it for, like we're doing the first and the third Sundays of the month, well, the first Sunday of December is December the 6th. Okay. And the only problem for me is I'm going to be in Mexico. Don't know. Oh yeah, get us all excited about an idea, <laughs> then you screw off to Mexico. Yeah, sure. <laughs> well, I'm I might be able to <laughs> I'll probably be able to join the Zoom call, but I don't know if I will have brought mine with me. <laughs> no, probably not. Well, would it be better than if we set it into say the third Sunday of November? When do you go to Mexico? We go on the fifth of December. <laughs> on the fifth of December. Well, if we yeah. put it on the twenty second of November, that's the third uh, that's the third Sunday in November. Sounds good. What's everybody thinking? Yes. Everybody okay with that? Hands up if yeah. you're okay with that. Hands up. Okay, it's carried. Okay, so November 22nd, I'm gonna put that in my notes. We're going to show our wooden box challenge. And, and I have a question, Is it a divided wooden box challenge or just wooden box? Oh. Yeah, I mean, we should say, I've got here a uh, sectioned wooden box or divided. Divided is probably a better word for it. Okay, divided wooden box. Okay. Divided wooden box challenge. Okay, so November 22nd. All right, I've got it in our notes. Okay, any other new business? I have one little thing. Um, I s saw Carol. Can you spotlight yourself, please? Oh, yeah, I guess I should. Yeah, keep forgetting to do that. Trying to be a director and participate at the same time is not easy and keep notes. Okay. Um, I did I did see Carol uh, about a week ago. I went into the store and everything, and she seems to be getting back into the swings of stuff, swing of stuff. It's been rough for her. And um, she's had a couple of other problems with her family as well, but these are sort of ongoing ones that she often has with her brothers. I don't know if you know the situation with her and her brothers, but... Oh, how do you put it mildly? Her brothers are deadbeats. Uh, <laughs> but anyways, she, I noticed that she, she sent out her um, weekly uh, blog or whatever from the store, and she's back at doing her Facebook Lives Inspiration Thursdays, and she's got a class she's going to do online and everything. So it's like she's in full swing again. So I can ask her if she'd like to come on with us on our next meeting, which will be... September 6th is our next meeting and see if she uh, is willing to come on and just share with us what's been going on at the store and everything she's got planned and things like that. Um, she was really keen the last time, but then of course, uh, bad part of life uh, interfered with all of that, right? So I will ask her uh, if that, if she'd come on with us on that day. So, and see what she says. And I think that's all the new business that I've got. Anybody got anybody got anything else for a new Do business? Alicia yep. in the store one day. 
Uh, um, be before um, Carol came back and she had sort of expressed some interest in joining the um, artist trading card group with us. But that was before she said that the kids were maybe not going to be going back to school and now she doesn't know what was going on. So I just sort of said to her if she was interested in it that she should maybe get in touch with you and you could add her to the list and she could yeah. join in on a, on a Sunday or whatever, okay, depending well, on what her schedule was like. I'll add that to my uh, request for her uh, to come on the show with us and everything. And so, and say if she's, she's more than welcome to join her ATC group and everything like that. And I'll tell her how we've been doing that since we've been doing it online. So, yep. Okay. Yeah. Fine. Um, again. Yes. Uh, Joanna. Joanne. Sorry, sorry. Who did you say? Was it Alicia? It was Alicia. Yes. Okay. Oh, it's not Carol. It's Alicia. Oh, okay. It was Alicia. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I will, uh, I'll so, send an um, email to I'm, her too. I'm going down to the store sometime this week because I have some things to pick up. So maybe I'll just write out the list of what our themes mm. are. And I'll and leave it, it for her. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay, that sounds good. If she's interested. Yeah, she sounded yeah. like she was interested and then you know with this COVID stuff she's like I don't know what's going to happen with her kids like she was I think yeah. her kids were going to be in school so she thought that was a great you know opportunity to join us but I think then she, once she's not sure about school so she may not but I just said to get in touch with actually I said to get in touch with Stephen if she wanted to be put on the list to be yeah. even part of the Sundays so yeah yeah offhand what's the theme for September uh I think birthday Happy birthday, I think. Okay. Yes, I side. think you're right. I haven't made any for a while yet, but it still might happen. <laughs> okay. And, Caroline, uh, well, Joanne's looking that up. Do you know what's happening with the Pointier ATC group? No, I do not. Uh, I know um, Susan was going to, Susan Dorchik was going to um, email uh, Heidi because, you know, Susan usually makes that thing yeah. with all the themes. So I, I haven't heard, but yeah. I don't get her emails. So <clears throat> I don't get Heidi's emails. So, um, yeah. We so, don't. I, okay. Okay. so I don't know, because August was, you know, we, we usually we pick the new yeah, one in August. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, any other New business anybody wants to bring up? Uh, oh, yes, Joanne. I'm, I'm just wondering how people are feeling about going in November to the, the weekend thing. Um, Is it still happening? If it's going to happen. She oh. hasn't canceled it yet. And what are hmm. the dates? Oh, I think it's near the end of November. I'm not sure. Let me see if I put it in my book. I haven't heard her say anything about that, and I hadn't seen anything in her newsletter either, so her mind may not be yet up to speed on that. I don't know. I know, well, I, know I hadn't heard anything about May, so I actually emailed them like, the day before it was supposed to start and said, is this still on? Because I don't think I will want to attend. And then yeah. she emailed back and said, oh, sorry, sorry, it's canceled. And uh, we're going to do it in November. So we'll just roll your uh, registration forward to November. And that's the last I heard. Yeah. And I, I told her that I would go to it if it happens, but I don't know if it's going to happen. I haven't heard anymore. Yeah. Okay. So I have my list. Numbers could be like how many are allowed. So it, I just looked on our website and it says classy crop November thirteenth to fourteenth, thirteenth, fourteenth to fifteenth. So those are the dates if she's still doing it. Mm -hmm. I guess it will just depend on how the numbers go and yeah. how comfortable yeah. people feel. <clears throat> Well, it's also going to, it's also I, going to, I, did, I did pay my $50 and she's, and said that I would go if she rolls, she's just going to roll our deposit over, mm -hmm. but we'll have to wait and see if, 
COVID comes back or whatever. Yeah. 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 But yeah. who's it's going? It's a ways off, but. Who's going if it is on? I will. I'm a, I'm a maybe. I don't it depends. know. Yeah. I'm registered, but uh, it depends on the numbers. I can't say right now. Yeah. Well, how big is the spot? Like, because you have to be able to, I mean, you obviously have to have a table by yourself, but then the tables have to be spread apart. I think she's back well, to then the, the whole place thing. it was in the, the very first time at the Legion, I think was where she said she was booking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, I mean, the space is pretty big, but yeah, if you have to be at a table, not attached to another table, I don't know how many she'll be able to fit. So the tables yeah. are six feet. Yeah. yeah. You know, True. not so, not to put a, a damper on the idea or anything like that, but um, there, we have a similar situation with my Quilters Guild. And uh, we were discussing at our executive meeting, so I'm on the executive the other night uh, through Zoom, and they were talking about planning a retreat in the fall. And I got upset with them. And very so to the point where I told them I would resign from, from the, the guild if they went through with it. And here was my philosophy on this. COVID, as much as we wish it would be gone, is not going to be gone this year. Mm -hmm. I think that's a reality. Also, the reason I say that is because that the second wave is going to come and it's going to come out of the school system. With those kids going back to school, for sure, within the first two weeks, mark my words, Kids are going to come home with COVID and it's going to spread again because there is no bloody way the school system with what the government is doing can keep those kids safe from it. So having said that to, the, to my guild, I said, what are we doing by offering a retreat to people? First of all, a lot of people aren't going to want to come, but those that do, and even with the restrictions, we would have it at the German club. That's where we always have it. Um, and they would spread us out and they have limits on it. But the German club could not provide food. They told us that, which they usually do. It's part of the thing. Um, we would all have to be sitting at our own tables and with the whole spacing out of that. At the guild retreats, they are very, very social. People are up seeing what everybody else is doing. And I would imagine, well, not imagine, I know at a scrapbooking retreat, at a crafting retreat, it's going to be the same thing. So how much fun are we actually going to have under those restrictions? Yeah. And I think what's happening is we're looking, we're trying to be hopeful. We're trying to grasp onto the last straws of normalcy. But that's what it is. It's a grasping at last straws. So my feeling about Carol's crafting retreat is if she's going to have it there, unless for some reason we suddenly have a cure and the world goes back to normal, I wouldn't even bother putting my name in for it. And I have a feeling that it's not going to go because I think Carol's going to think the same thing. Um, yeah. with all of this as well, because she doesn't want to take the chance of, let's face it, the clientele that goes to these retreats tend to be a little bit older, okay? We're, we're in that so. target range of worst, yeah, yes. being the most. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. not everybody is, but most of us most are, of us are. you know, so our health is, like, we. my health is good, but still, I'm at a, in a vulnerable age group. So I'm just saying that I don't know. I. I, I'm not going to be signing up for it. Um, well, yeah. And that's partly of it for me. Plus I have, you know, elderly parents who I want to continue yeah. to be able to visit. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, going to Mexico is enough of a risk. Yeah. We realize we may have to self-quarantine for two weeks when we come back. I, I'm um, really glad that you have that enthusiasm that you will actually get to Mexico. Yeah. <laughs> because <laughs> I don't think you're actually going to get to Mexico. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't know that we'll be allowed to travel to Mexico at the time, but you know, it's, it's, yeah, it's a, if we booked the week last, last December when we were in Mexico, we booked this week. So, and I had some bonus stuff. So I've actually booked flights, but bought travel insurance, <laughs> you know, so yeah, I mean, it's, uh, you do know the travel insurance won't cover you if it's a COVID related problem. Actually, I checked and this did, oh, they said it did. Oh, okay, because a lot of them aren't doing that now. 
I mean, we're still fighting with our insurance company to get back ha half our money from that river cruise we booked like way back yeah. last fall. Yeah, you know, but I only so. I only bought bought the travel insurance in August. So it was already within COVID. So oh, okay. I asked. So oh, okay. it's different. It wasn't I only bought plane tickets and the travel age tra yeah, and, and yeah. the insurance in August and I mean I only paid sixty three American dollars for this travel insurance. So oh, if it, Okay. I paid you know, nine hundred. So <laughs> yeah. So but, um yeah, I mean it's a different cir circumstance. Yeah. Yeah. But uh you know, I had some bonus stuff that was going to expire in August. So I, I booked the tickets. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, see, yeah. that's the, the problem. It's so hard to plan anything because, you know, part of us inside want to go, yes, I, this thing, I'm hoping it's going to be over, you know, the wishful thinking, but because if we go for the alternative <laughs> and start to believe it's not going to be, we go into depression and despair and we're all trying to rise above that, you know? It's a short trip to, you know, a big box of uh, pills. <laughs> well, I, I, I have another question, though. Because um, the problem with scrapbooking is, yeah, you want to go around and look at everybody's, and it's hard yeah. to be, you'll be in an enclosed area. Does anyone have any enthusiasm for maybe just meeting somewhere like in the park closest to the store and having a socially distanced lunch with each, with each other or something like that. I like the idea, but I'm afraid of the idea because yeah. there's always other people in the park too. And mm. especially if you do it in Oshawa, uh, you know, if you like did it at Memorial Park, which is the closest one to Carol, you know what lives in the park, don't you? hate to say it but that park. yeah what's that well like i said you know what lives in the park no <laughs> i don't know i i i appreciate the spirit in which you're presenting the idea um i just uh, for me i'm still just a little iffy about it i mean i i said to gina just before everybody else came on today that this past week i went out for lunch twice and I was very nervous about one was in like we we just had to get out so we went to Prince Edward County went to Belleville we went to two fabric stores it was all very you know the masks the whole bit had to go in and then we had lunch in Bloomfield and it was on a patio and the tables were way spread out and they disinfected everything including yourself um, when you had to go in with your mask on and all that kind of stuff and then I had lunch with my sister on Friday at uh, place near to her in Bowmanville with the same situation. The patio was out in the parking lot and the tables were like 12 feet apart and everything like that. And even still, it just, I couldn't relax, mm -hmm. you know, like you used to, you just, I mean, it felt nice to be able to do this, but all the time you're on edge, you're on edge, you know? So yeah. Oh, Darla's here. Let her in. Here's Darla. Hi, Darla. Hi, Darla. Hi, Darla. Hi, Darla. She's connecting. Oh, she's connecting so, to audio. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's, I, I love the spirit of the idea, but I don't think I'm going to partake into it. I'm just, I'm just sorry. I'm just too, I no, wouldn't that's... have a good time. This is a much better time than I, because yeah. you're absolutely safe. In that. Yeah, I'm, I'm liking this. Yeah. yeah. I'm liking this too. I just, you know, I, I, my sister was in from Vancouver to see my parents, and uh, we actually had a socially distanced meal outside at our place. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was, you know, my sister, who, who hasn't been in a store since COVID, went on an airplane. Oh, geez. <laughs> <laughs> now, she did buy the companion seat, so there wasn't mm. anyone sitting right beside her. But uh, so... The you what know, seat? You can buy a companion seat. Oh. So you can buy a seat beside you. There is some discount. It's not quite the same thing as a full fare. She couldn't remember the numbers though, but she said if she's paid three hundred for her seat, she paid two fifty for the other seat. Wow. You know, so that sounds to me like a gouge by the airlines too. Yeah, but on the other hand, the plane was about ninety percent full. So because you mm. know they, as of July first, they stopped alternating the seats, right? Yeah. So, I mean, it, it allowed her to be able to come and see my parents, our parents. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I'm just, 
I mean, you know, when I first, I mean, when I go to see my brother, I bring my own chair. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not that I, you know, and I would, I would say if we did something like this, I, I'd be bringing my own chair. I don't care what the park has or whatever. <laughs> but right. um, I was just wondering, you know, it seemed like something to me that's, I can understand why I wouldn't want to go to a crop. It's somewhere in between though. And that's, I'm, I'm trying to see where, for me, where I can expand the boundaries just a little. Um, well, I, I don't know. I, I get what you're saying, but I'm just, for me, just for me, I'm, I'm, and I'm too, I'm too paranoid. I that's guess. That's perfect. It's not, I'm yeah. not, it's not a criticism. <laughs> for no, me. no. I, I totally understand. I mean, I haven't, <laughs> I finally, you know, because we were going to Kingston, I had to use a public bathroom, but I hadn't used a public bathroom in months, right? right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's the whole thing. It's just sad that our world has come to this, but yeah. I guess we have to do whatever and hope for the best mm -hmm. uh, with it. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, one thing. Oh, any, any other new business before I move on to the next meeting idea? Anything anybody's got? Oh, Joanne? Yep, Joanne. Um, so I have my list for the ATC cards. September is birthday. October is creepy. November is miss you slash reflection. December is red, green, and gold. Thank you. Okay, great. And... Uh, Anything else? Um, uh, our next meeting date, I don't know if this will present a problem for anybody, uh, is on Sunday, September the 6th, uh, but that's also Labor Day weekend. So is that, I'm okay. that present a problem for anybody? Everybody's I'm okay? Okay. okay. I figured we all would be. I, I, I won't be there. What's that, Pat? I won't be there. You won't be there? Okay. Um, we got, we're going to the potty, yeah. Okay, so we'll still hold it for that, but we'll be missing Pat. Okay. Um, all right. In non-COVID, Pat wouldn't have been here. <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay, so anything else that we want to discuss? Um, oh, if is should I now turn off the recording? Do we have something that anybody wants to discuss that is just for our group only? No, nope, we're okay. All right, so we don't have to go into uh, cone of silence. Actually, I, oh. I, I have a... Okay, Lynn, let me... If there's nothing more for our public meeting, then I'm going to turn off the recording and I have to find the bloody thing. There it is. Stop recording. Okay, we are no longer recording. Wait, because we are.